for my part, it is about my identity. How did I think about how to build myself? That was the basic question in the 70s. And um, as I tried to talk about it before, that, um, that I really wanted to change the way I, w I was predestined. And uh, why I wanted to do so, just because I did not want it to be as someone would say how I should be. So I, I wanted to actually free myself from the predestined uh, situation. So like in the center of the exhibition, um, the photographs Gustav took between 74 and 79, and almost in every image here at the exhibition, he is represented. Uh, sometimes as a series of self-portraits, sometimes in a tableau of photographs, sometimes as a performer being part of a photo series. And uh, we also expressing this in the exhibition. We're showing like an inner space, a space which is out of control of an institution, a state, uh, especially in the time when the photos were taken uh, during the socialistic area. So the, the apartment, the private space was a kind of space where you experimented and uh, would invite people to performances and uh, uh, um, artistic interventions. Uh, and then, uh, then there is this outer space, the public space, the city where Gustav did photo performances, like in the work when I was 19, uh, where he climbs into the, uh, the left over from 56 uh, Stalin uh, pedestal a relief and, uh, and does a performance inside the um, sculptural uh, workers, represented workers. So, yeah, identity means in the exhibition from nothing to one, um, the identity or the possibilities you have uh, inside a safe space and uh, the chances and influences you can take in public space. The cityscapes, the cityscapes basically were developed in the 70s as a conceptual photographic series where I was working on many different principles. I mean, not that many, basically two, two different principles. The one was to find the line in a um, technical image with a photo apparatus, which is a, 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 an easy thing. So you just have to move around the space and find the line and, and put your um, camera in the position where you can half uh, the image, that you can divide the image of two halves. I, I found a whole lot of uh, lines Indeed, and that was interesting because then when Katja found those images and asked what it is about, then I was saying, oh, this is like the thing that was a, a, an important way of thinking the socialist um, dictatorship, that you have to be in line. So it's like an, an inline skater uh, <laughs> society. Um, and, and this is still an interesting topic because if you, are, if you are not in line, just right now, for example, then it could be very dangerous for you. It was definitely very dangerous back then. The other thing was uh, that I was exploring is the space itself. And there are also many different aspects of it. So if you, if you produce a series of photographs, then you are already in a kind of cinematographic situation where each image that you produce was shot in another time. And you can see it actually in the, uh, in, in, in the tableau of 1st of May, which here calls B-Labor. Basically, I, I, was, I was standing in front of the, uh, this pedestal that we were talking about before. 
and, uh, and, and try to make a 360 degree image. And you can see that, that one, after, one after another was done because the whole, uh, the whole parade is just moving around me, which actually made me crazy. And what I found interesting, because uh, when I Gustav met, I, I started to look at these negatives that, um, that he was not actually interested in a single image and the composition of a single image, but rather in uh, sequences and ways of like, like programs, like look for this line which separates the images and you start looking for this line and start to discover the space around you. And um, I, what I find really beautiful is that a lot of images, they are even done without looking through the camera. They are like coincidence and the, the, the composition of the images comes through this kind of program he was photographing. Un uncontrolled photography. Yeah, that's how you yeah, call it. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's something very special. You know, there is not this this moment shot, or how you call this moment? Snapshot. Yeah, the kind of snapshot character in the photography. Mm. Around 2000, like 24 years ago, we, uh, we did a work called uh, Fremdkörper in German. In English, it's Transposed Bodies. It's actually the, our first photo film um, where we decided to use photography because the story is told from inside the body and from outside the body. And uh, so everything what happens in the body is told with moving images in color and uh, the, the actual narrative of two persons losing their head, um, a remake of Thomas Mann's uh, short uh, novel, Switched Head, uh, is told with black and white photographs. So you already added the switching the heads and, and here comes the love story <laughs> because obviously they did not switch their heads just like that but rather they lose their heads because they fall in love with the same woman. And after they manage to cut their heads off, she obviously loved both of them, but in different ways. So she unconsciously, seemingly unconsciously, switched the heads. So now I, she, she had a perfect lover and a, a complete you know, uh, loser. <laughs> And, uh, but the story goes like this, that the perfect body uh, slowly turned to be imperfect because the head. So, you know, the, 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 the smart guy did not take care of his body. So when he got the nice body, he just, um, how do you call this, spoiled it, uh, nay, um, rather just destroyed it in a way. And, and the other one with the with, 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 the, with, the, with the body from, from, the, the, from the smart guy, he became a little more smarter. <laughs> so it has so much to do with photography and film that we did the first photo film with that topic. And we actually created first the exhibition, which is a, a, an installation. You can see it in, still in, in Ludwig Lumu, as, as you say it here in Hungary. Then we produced the installation and uh, we exhibited actually first in, in, in Ludwig Museum and then we produced also the book. So we, we had three representation form and that was, that it was a model or that has been a model which we used then later on when we started to develop further films with still images. But what was interesting that in this time, photography and film were still very much apart. That's and over the last 24 years, there was a kind of paradigm shift mm -hmm. uh, from the analog to the digital, from the photo camera and film camera melting into one machine, apparatus. Uh, yeah. And now, uh, you know, like as a person handling with uh, uh, apparatuses who make images, you actually choose if you want to have a still image or a moving images. And the conscious uh, choice. Yeah. yeah. And when we started, like transposed body was the per se example for this kind of conflict between still images and moving images. The photography back then, when it was a materialized image that you could hold in your hand. And why to do so, you obviously know that this image has been, means that it shows you something that already happened sometimes. 
before. So that was always the past that you could hold in your hand. And if you go to the cinema, which you didn't back then or watch television anyway, then you were always sitting in a situation which was in the becoming, means that you always knew that it will something surprise you in some ways, right? So, therefore, the cinema stands for the future. How the future going to be? You are waiting for the future. While you have hold the photograph, then you know that this is the past. So if you put the photograph in the cinematographic context, then you put something which has been already in a context which going to be, right? And that already makes two things. The one is there is a possibility of time travel. This is the, the, the one thing. And, and the other one is that you can see the images. I mean, okay, so if, if you see an action movie which, which uh, moves very fast, then you would not be able to see the, uh, the images, but you, you, you'll be rather overwhelmed by the action and the sound and everything. The photo film is just complete opposite. It deconstructs, as we say, the filmic situation because you can see the image and you can observe it much longer than, than any moving image. Except if the camera is not moving and there is not much action. So you can do similar things with moving image also. But with the photograph, this is definitely a thing that you can understand, you can, you, you can scan it up, you can um, contemplate on the image. So these two things is to tell about it. And in that point, I can tell also that, that the one who did the basic work with still images in the cinematog cinematographic context was Chris Marker, his film La Jetée, which is actually a time travel film and a science fiction film. But not much people know, but this is basically about concentration camp experience. The exhibition represents images from the 80s and combines it um, with uh, images from today. Um, in, we applied some of Gustav's artistic strategies, the halving and uh, the tableau, tableau, folding sheet and object uh, to our present times. Uh, since four years, uh, we, are, we are working in collaboration with memorial sites in Germany and uh, de developed also VR works, virtual reality works, uh, with the question um, why or how should we remember after the time witnesses of um, the um, nationalistic um, times are not there anymore to report. And uh, that means uh, we became very aware in the last years uh, on places which uh, care traces of uh, crimes, uh, uh, crimes which were... Uh, against humanity. Yes. Yeah, crimes against, crimes against humanity, like trauma places. And um, so we included this because we think it fits to our uh, um, uh, city films, which are part of the exhibition, to our reflection, the topic of taking care of how a public space represents history. Uh, connects very well with the city films because uh, the city films also observe territories, they observe spaces and they observe um, to, whom, to whom the place belongs. Um, if a city or a state controls a place or if the, the system, the state also gives a voice to the people living in the city. Maybe in that point we should also ask this very basic question, so why should we care about monuments? And we can also answer that question, because monuments control the past. And who controls the past controls the future too. So here we go again with the time.